Steph Gordon joins me. <laughs> Smiley as ever. Smiley as ever. I definitely put that down as a grimace rather than a smile. <laughs> How mistreated the average white middle-aged man is. If I had no context for this, I hadn't looked at his channel, I hadn't looked him up, I'd be like, oh, he's being ironic, he's joking. But no, he is going on here being like, white middle-aged men are the most hard done by people in the world. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today, a, uh, a big... Dorito Man is gonna tell us how to tell if your girlfriend is a secret feminist so you can dump her. This is Timothy Gordon. I have immediate thoughts and they're not very nice thoughts. I'm gonna try and phrase them. I'm trying to be honest here. So if you think I'm a terrible person, at least you'll know. <laughs> I'm usually quite nice. I just, I, I, this comes up so often that I feel like I have to say it. There are so many men online who have, uh, there are women who do this too, but I guess I'm coming from a specific perspective, so I find more men of those. There are so many men who have opinions on women that share online. Their opinions of how women should uh, behave, what makes a terrible girlfriend. They have lists of rules. They do two-hour live streams. By the way, this video, this how to vet a feminist girlfriend video, it's a live stream. It's two hours long, and there's a part two that's two and a half hours long. I mean, he can't be that on it if it's taking that long to explain this to us. So any guy who who I stumble across who has this like, all of these strict requirements for how women should behave, look, act, all of this stuff, they always end up having this look and personality. They just always have a look that is not maybe <laughs> conventionally the most attractive. I know that's mean. It shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. But there's just something about giving your opinions of how women should be because they have to be good enough to date men like me and you look at them and maybe it's just me but I personally don't find this kind of aesthetic the mullet with the Dorito body Mary on the t-shirt I don't know just whatever this look is however you would categorize this it does not appeal to me in the slightest let's just say that my other immediate thought is why would a feminist an actual feminist as in believing in equality and equal opportunities and equal rights regardless of gender, right? A, a, a normal feminist. Why would you keep that a secret to date someone really sexist? Because <laughs> as a feminist, that's not what you fucking want. <laughs> so this is going to be weird. We're not going to watch a full two hours. If they get a bit rambly, I'll skip through parts, but we'll just sort of kick off from the beginning and see where this goes. Um, so first of all, who the hell is Timothy Gordon? Timothy J. Gordon, my research tells me, he is a Catholic. He's very overtly, conservatively, hardcore Catholic. He's He, he loves his Catholicism. His YouTube, pa I'll show you his YouTube page. Here is his YouTube homepage. I'm sorry, I still have the mi Minecraft sound effects turned on. Let me mute that. Although props to everyone who recognised the Enderman sound effect last time I left it on. <laughs> Let's turn that off for a minute. Um, so here's Tim Gordon, Timothy J. Gordon. He has a show that he calls Rules for Retrogrades. So either he has a show that is Rules for Degenerates or Rules for People Who Want to Go Back in Time, which is probably what it is. He probably wants to go back to an imagined 1950s, which the 1950s was not actually like. It's just a certain brand of American person, American man usually, that believes 1950s propaganda and wants to live in that time. Tradition for bold yet obedient Catholics. Obedient is capitalised. So he has this JD, his name is About Timothy Gordon, JD, PHLMA. And I had to, I didn't know what that meant, so I had to look it up, and apparently he has a number of degrees. I couldn't find anything anywhere that said where his degrees come from specifically. I, I looked. If anybody knows or can find it, let me know. But I looked. The best I could find was from a website called Catholic World Report, which says that he studied philosophy in pontifical graduate universities in Europe, which means Catholic universities in Europe. I don't know why it doesn't specify what the universities were, it makes me think that it's so we can't check. I got my postgraduate in York University, the University of York. I'm not afraid to tell people that. I don't hide it away 
and because it's a legitimate university. It was a great university and I had a wonderful time there. So it, there's just something a little bit sus about that for me when, when people do that. There's, there's a Kent Hovind thing about it, right? Where it's like, oh, well, I have all these degrees. I'm a doctor. But I refuse to tell you where I got those degrees. And you're like, okay, so you're not a doctor. <laughs> you know, there's just, he might be perfectly legitimate. It's just weird that it's hidden. But he's apparently a very learned and studied individual. And uh, that is why he teaches us how to avoid dating a feminist. <laughs> Seems like a mismatch. I don't know. So that's uh, that's Timothy Gordon. Before we kick off, you might have noticed uh, something about my aesthetic today that stands out particularly. I'm talking about my beautiful glasses. It is November. You know what that means. The absolute terror of Black Friday. Luckily, I'm going to tell you about something you can buy online so you don't have to be punched in the face by an angry mother. This video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest eyewear retailers. That is a real word. I just like lost faith in my own brain for a second in the word eyewear. Eyewear is a real word. They're one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the US. They offer over 10,000 prescription eyeglasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses are up to 70% off retail prices, starting at only 39 and during this holiday season, GlassesUSA.com has so many exclusive offers that you cannot find anywhere else. I highly recommend you check out these holiday offers by clicking the link in the description below. What I'm wearing right now is Muse Cherish in pink. I just love these. They were my mum's favourite when I showed them to her and she's a very fashionable lady. So they're cute, but with that little bit of quirky stylish. This pair is the Revel Relay in green. You can see it's just, it's subtle but it's stylish. That's what I really like. This pair I've been wearing like constantly. I just really like the feel. It's got such a nice matte finish. If you've been watching recent videos, you'll have seen these before. This pair is the Bolson. These have become my like everyday work glasses. If I get my phone for you now, I'm gonna swap back to my Muse Cherish because I picked these for this outfit today. GlassesUSA.com has this try on filter which is like an AR technology thing, right? So you have this new try-on. You're having a look through the many, many beautiful options. You're like, oh, I like the Muse Jojo in this tortoise shell color. You hit try-on, let it use your camera, and it comes up with the little egg that you put your face in. I stick my head in it. Now I'm trying on my glasses in AR. And I can see that I th actually, I kind of think that this shape really suits me. I really like those, but you can change the color and see what they all look like without having to be in a shop. Plus, shopping online at GlassesUSA.com is nice and risk-free. You get a 100% money-back guarantee within 14 days. You get free shipping and returns. Plus, if you are also like me and you just find the amount of choice completely overwhelming, there is this really cool quiz on the website that you can take. It just gives you like an overview from the start of the type of glasses you're looking for. So I can say I want feminine glasses, I'm looking for eyeglasses. And then it builds you a personal collection based on your choices. How cool is that? Do go to glassesusa.com now, check out their holiday offers. They are also offering an exclusive discount on top of any holiday coupon codes they have on the website, just for you guys. It's only available for 24 hours. Click on the links in the top of the description box to get all the details. Once again, thank you so much glassesusa.com for sponsoring this video and making me look fabulous. Back to Dorito Man. Here we go. Dump her. How to Vet a Feminist Girlfriend, starring Dorito Man and Distressed Looking Lady. I don't know what he said to her before they started, but she don't look happy. Today, Steph Gordon joins me, <laughs> smiley as ever. Smiley as ever. I definitely put that down as a grimace rather than a smile. <laughs> Discuss a, a list show in listing catalog format. I love list shows. Top five things to see when you're in fart town. Number three will make your brain explode. The 10 ways to vet and spot and root out of your lives, young men, feminist girlfriends. And the, the presupposition here is that feminist girlfriends hide. They've hidden amongst us. They start. <laughs> I'm hiding. <laughs> Stalk the halls invisibly like a, a, a ring wraith or like Frodo <laughs> or Gollum with, with the ring on. No, Hobbit says I don't believe in equal rights for the sexes. <laughs> it's precious. 
Feminists are like ring wraiths. Feminists are like ring wraiths and or golem. What a fucking outstanding quote for the first 30 seconds. He's pretty good, not gonna lie. A ghoul. With, like a ghoul? A ghoul friend. Uh, like your ghoul, <laughs> your ghoul friend is invisibly feminist oftentimes and we're giving- Your ghoul friend is invisibly feminist. Okay, oh no. She started with a pun, that means I like her. <laughs> you 10 ways to not necessarily just spot it, but 10 ways to spot and vet. In other words, the 10 items on this list, this show is all Steph's idea. The 10 <laughs> items on this list are ways that will at once, if you perform the item, it will sound out and eradicate your feminist girlfriend. Not, not from life or anything like that. From, don't from your relationship, from your... From Thank God he clarified, because for a second I was about to be like, is this about how to murder your girlfriend? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just about how to get her out of your life. Again, I still don't... I, maybe they'll go on to explain. I hope they do. I don't understand why a, a feminist, an actual feminist, a woman who fights for equal rights regardless of gender or sex, I don't understand why that person would want to be secretly in a relationship with a sexist man. Is this, like, supposed to be, like, because she thinks she can change him by secretly being a feminist? Because I don't know anyone like that. It not the whole, like, conservative meme about feminists that they're so loud and annoying about feminism? Except for when they're secretly hiding in, in plain sight so you can make this ten-step video that Steph wants to make. She has the most- I've paused on a beautiful frame for both of them, actually. I was about to say she has the most hilarious facial expressions, but look at the two of them together. They are perfect for each other. Look at those faces. From your presence. <laughs> Which is all you really care about. You don't- you've never made sense. These- these spouses or longtime girlfriends <laughs> and boyfriends that do violence to each other. Just break- break up if you're a boyfriend and girlfriend. Thank you. Thank you for a piece of decent advice, Timothy, at the very beginning of this video. That is actually a relief to hear. Because so much of the, especially when they are hardcore conservative, if they're hardcore religious, in this case he's very Catholic, for them to actually say, because so much of this is like, you can't get divorced, you can't break up, you can't do it. You've got to power through, you've got to just deal with it for a like hardcore catholic type to say no if there's violence going on you should just break up there's no reason to count that's actually great this has started off really well we've had a pun we've had good advice let's see where we go with this if you're a spouse with someone well murder is not the answer there is no real answer it's too late once you've married the wrong person i should have I should have let him finish the thought because no, he, he does believe in the whole no divorce thing. If you've married a, I don't understand why you would be abusive in a relationship. Just dump them. But once you're married, it's too late. No, if you're, if you're married and you're in an abusive relationship, you should still break up. If you don't believe in divorce, get separated and never get remarried. If that's, if you really, really believe that, just don't get remarried, right? Because that's the whole thing, right? It's okay to not be with someone if they're hurting you. Was, we, we came so close to something beautiful and then just sort of fell off a cliff really rapidly. Spot and eradicate a, femi a lurking crypto-feminist Catholic feminist. A lurking crypto-feminist Catholic feminist. This girlfriend before it's too late. That's what today's show is all about. It's mm -hmm. 10 ways to... Sp By the way, if you're complaining in the comments if you're if you're annoyed at how this looks this video this live stream is in 720p webcam technology has never gotten brilliant so you can only really get like 1080p webcams they're using 720p i guess for their live streams and the focus isn't brilliant so i am so sorry there's nothing i can do about them going really out of focus and it not being very high quality so just apologies in advance for that spot and eradicate what do you think steady yeah i just i feel like i'm going around just feeling bad for a lot of men in society. I'm seeing them in these just horrible relationships. A lot of them don't even know they're in these bad relationships. A lot of them don't even know they're in bad relationships. They think they're happy. But I, as a married Catholic woman, know better. Young men, you're not actually happy if your girlfriend believes in equal rights. Your girlfriend have a job? Mm, you're not happy.
Does she ever disagree with you? Bitch, you're not happy. You could have a puppy dog slave girlfriend. And then you'd be really happy. This is the thing that always kind of blows my mind, right? It's that, like, I'm just so sorry for all these people. It's the same with uh, the transformed wife, um, classically Abby, all of these, a girl defined, all of these people where, when they come across as genuine, I think maybe this is, like, genuinely what's happened. Maybe some of them are pretending for money. Uh, we'll never know without being able to be inside other people's heads, so there's no point guessing. But a lot of the time, I think they genuinely are happy. They want this lifestyle. It makes them joyful. So they, because their lifestyle also, their lifestyle that makes them happy also matches the religion they were brought up with, they think, I have cracked the code to happiness. These other people that don't, share my lifestyle, that say they don't want my lifestyle, they're wrong, they don't understand as well as I do, if they could just listen and learn from me, then they'd really be happy. And it's difficult because the core of that is not hateful, it's genuinely wanting people to be happy and, and being a little bit, forgive me for saying so, but when it is that kind of extreme you think everyone should be the same way, it's a little bit of brainwashing by religion, right? And that kind of sucks, because they want the best for people, they just can't understand, they can't believe when people in other kinds of relationships are like, no, I, I am happy, I prefer to be working, to have equal say with my partner, I think that equal rights are important, and so does my male partner, and we both agree on that, it's something that's really important to him, maybe even more than, you know, he's thought about it more than I have which is like something that I would probably say. It's kind of like, here's my stupid example, right? It kind of feels like if I went on and did a two hour live stream that was like, how to vet a non-gamer girlfriend. And I was like, there is no way you can be happy dating someone that isn't a gamer. I feel so sorry for all these young men dating people who don't play video games because they might even think they're happy, but they're not. Just because I think that one of the best things you can do in a relationship is play games together. That doesn't mean... I, I'm not so self-centred and, and blinded by what I personally enjoy to think that everyone out there would be happier in a relationship where they play video games together. That would be stupid. That would be really silly. That's kind of how I feel about this whole thing. It's a little bit ridiculous. And if it was just advice for people who want to live this way, this is how you want to live your life. Here's advice for living this lifestyle that you enjoy. That would be fine. But it has to be like, I feel sorry for the people who are dating someone who believes in equal rights because they're just not happy, even though they don't know that they're in a bad relationship. It's so bad because she thinks they should be equal, you know? It's like, it could be something good or even just fine, you know, no <laughs> neutral, but they have to just make it like, no, we have the right way. We have the right way. Everyone else is wrong. And that's the problem when these beliefs are tied to religion. Because if you believe that a way of living is godly and everything else is not, of course you think that. Like, I don't blame them for thinking that. If that is their religion, at the same time, I could not disagree more. And just, I feel pity for them. So I was telling Tim the other day, I was just like, you know, we should really just talk about this. Like, just help young men identify early problems in the relationship that stem from a woman's bad ideology that yep. are going to manifest later if this moves forward into a marriage to a ca catastrophe. So there are, luckily, there are- What kind of catastrophe? Like she wants to get a job? She wants to go back to work after they have kids or something? Like what kind of catastrophe could this be? She won't do what he says all the time? I'm just trying to work out what disaster this could be. Yes, I do think actually it's important to work out, maybe maybe vet, that seems like a weird way of putting it, but it's important to work out if there are strong ideological differences early on. But I don't think, at least most of the time, I don't think people are going around hiding what they secretly think. I think the the only risk in that area, I would say, is when people are abusive. Because if people are abusive assholes, most of the time, they'll do things like love bombing at the start of the relationship. And you won't know this whole, like, it's too late when you get married. That's the big concern for me. Not like, it turns out she's a feminist. You know? Silly. Luck, there are a lot of things that you can spot early if you have eyes to see. So.
And That's... we'll give you those eyes to see. And a lot of this <laughs> comes from... Advi Please do. I'm going to skip ahead a bit to see if they get to the first point at some stage. They're, I guess they're introing while people arrive in the live stream, so whatever. Ice that we give to you to react to this real quick. It's it's an issue that's loomed large for us over the last week. I, his, I, I kind of want to see like a full... I wonder if there's a full-sized picture of him online because I just like he... I can't... He looks like he's leaning forwards, but maybe it's just the angle of the camera. But then Steph doesn't. And so he, he looks... Like, sometimes I have the camera at an angle that makes my head look like I'm like this and it makes my head look really big or whatever, or I just lean forward because I'm excited. And I just... His body looks weird, is what I'm trying... Like, he looks weird and I, I want to know... what. There's lots of headshots. Oh, uh, there's a book. Ask Your Husband, A Wife's Guide to True Femininity by Mrs. Timothy J. Gordon. I'm going to bookmark that for later. Maybe it is just the angle. Or something, you know? It's just there's something... He just looks... Am I just a douchebag? He looks like a Dorito man, and I'm finding it distracting. Hey, carry on. The number one demographic of suicide committers is middle-aged white men. Middle-aged white men. And... I hope he's not about to say, because they have secretly feminist girlfriends. Because I don't think that's why. This guy freeze frames fucking brilliantly. Look at that. So... Here's an interesting side point. The USA has one of the highest suicide rates among wealthy nations. So there's something in how the USA specifically is run that means that there is a higher suicide rate there overall. Interestingly, while um, male suicides are reported much higher, um, there is a much higher rate of male suicide in the USA, I believe it's the same in England, or it was last time I checked, citation needed. From 1999 to 2010, the largest increases in suicide rates were among women aged 60 to 64. This is all just to say that it is terrible, and uh, male mental health is something that is not discussed nearly enough. There's still so much stigma. A lot of that comes from the stereotypes and the ideas we have about men and women from things like religion okay, well, we're not gonna i guess gordon's the gordons aren't gonna link that in the most common method in the usa is also firearm usage but again the availability of firearms is not something that the gordons would bring into the conversation there's a lot around that that is not considered in these conversations by this type of it, it, the correlation that makes sense for my specific view of the world is what you know tends to be brought into these sort of discussions that's why i like to just like check the statistics and and see what's you know going on there and what's interesting this has to have something to do with the abuse they're taking at the hands of their wives almost ubiquitously I know he's a very educated, intelligent man. That doesn't mean that he can just say, this must be because, and that makes it true. I hear something else. He he mentioned that uh, the, the biggest demographic for suicide rates are white men um, in the USA. I think probably white men make up a big part of the USA, so I don't know exactly how those statistics are accounted, where he's got those from. Native Americans and white Americans have the highest suicide rate in the US. Uh, more recently, the CDC has reported that suicides have sharply increased among people of colour, while white American suicides have decreased. So the suicide rate for white men is going down, the suicide rate for people of colour is going up. I'm not trying to particularly make a point, I'm more trying to counter the implied point by Jeff Gordon here. It's a terrible and white men are suffering. Here's the context of that, those facts, here's the context of those statistics that maybe don't paint the picture that he's trying to paint. When I was looking this up, I found an interview with a psychotherapist who puts forward his uh, thoughts on why the suicide rate is so high for white males of a certain age in the USA. And he does basically say, TLDR, there is this stereotype that men are supposed to be strong, they are supposed to you know, be the head of the family, have all this responsibility, and they are not supposed to ask for help. They are supposed to power through on their own. But those are also the things that this sort of conservative group teaches. So they're kind of ignoring all those things to go, it must be because of the feminists that they're dating. He's not pulled that from a source. He's just said it with conviction. Also referring to domestic violence, because that is what he keeps referencing, um... 
in the USA, one in four men have experienced physical violence, stalking, um, sexual assault by an intimate partner in their lifetime. One in three women, over one in three women, have experienced the same. It is something that Again, because of the stereotypes, the cultural, the ideological ideas of what men are supposed to be, that sort of thing, it's thought to be underreported in men. It's thought to be underreported in women as well because of the stigma and the and the stereotypes around reporting violence and getting out of that in any situation. Um, so it's likely there are more men than reported experiencing that. But again, the idea that it's all these feminist women hurting men and that's what that's just just a real crazy leap that doesn't represent the actual facts it's misleading basically tldr that's misleading you can't tell me it doesn't have something to do with how mistreated the average white middle-aged man is <laughs> he's like a he's like a meme if i had no context for this i hadn't looked at his channel i hadn't looked him up I'd be like, oh, he's being ironic. He's joking. But no, he is going on here being like, like the joke version of conservatism. Like, white middle-aged men are the most hard done by people in the world. Publicly, in the public forum, in commercials, mm -hmm. and out in the open. And then privately, it's got to be a lot. So they always go, they always go to commercials. And like how men are treated in sitcoms. It's very, it's just very weird. Worse. I, I don't buy that the high suicide rate doesn't have to do with men. If they're Christian, they can't get out of the marriage and they're married to someone that abuses. They can. Christians can get out of the marriage. And once again, these ultra conservative, hardcore Christian values lend to abuse by men to their female spouses. But it's like he's pretending that's not a thing and imagining instead that it's far more common for Christian women or feminists pretending to be Christian women to abuse their husbands. I'm not saying that doesn't happen and that it's not terrible and probably vastly underreported, but he's like pretending the inverse doesn't happen. And if we look at these kind of people, she's got a book, Steph Gordon has a book that's like titled listen to your husband or do what your husband like the whole thing is like women should be doing what their husbands say their husbands should have control over the relationship of course that leads more to abuse from the men to the women because the women are supposed to be the submissive slave woman and the man is in control like it's so bizarre for them to pretend that the opposite is true or maybe the reason they think that relationships between a man and a feminist woman are so abusive is because they expect the norm to be a man being a bit abusive in how controlling he is to his wife. Maybe because that's the norm, they look at equality as abuse against the man because he doesn't get the final say on everything and is like told he's an idiot sometimes. Maybe that's what it is. That would explain a lot, right? We've not even got into the 10 things and I feel like this is already too long. I guess this is me learning about the Gordons and what they think. This is like an introduction to them, I suppose. If you find this interesting, let me know and we'll come back to him later. Let's carry on a little bit. Women abuse men in this society, make no mistake, folks. Well, and usually that takes the form of just really not appreciating the fact that men also have feelings and want approval and praise and I completely agree. And I think, again, that's an issue with traditional conservative values. Men do have feelings, but it's the traditional conservative sphere that says, oh, men, boys shouldn't cry and, and men should be strong and the leader of the house and women are the, the emotional female ones. No, I, men have feelings. I don't think men not getting enough praise in a relationship equals abuse. I don't think it's abusive to not be constantly going, well done, you're fucking brilliant, to your partner. I think both people should be very supportive of their partner because it's a partnership. I think that should be equal. It's not a question of men just don't get enough praise in a relationship. And it's that's equivalent to domestic abuse. Like, what the fuck? To be treated with dignity and respect. And men are not there to be your handmaiden and to do everything that you say. But the implication is that women are there to be your maid. So why is it bordering abuse 
for a, 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 a man to be like a handmaid. But it's perfectly ideal for a woman to be like a maid and a slave to her husband. Hey, ladies. You're and there to be his. You're there to to be his helpmeet. Yeah, that's she's literally saying like the exaggerated version that I just gave. It's abusive for a man to be there to help a woman in a relationship. Because the woman is supposed to be there to help the man. And that's not abusive because that's the way that God wanted it to be or something. I can't deal with any more. That's like we literally covered like none of that video. We didn't even get into the 10 things I don't think. There's no chapters. C can I, in this relationship, this parasocial relationship between you, the audience, and me, can I get a bit of praise for putting chapters in my videos? So if you want to skip to a certain point or come back later, you actually can, instead of just having a two-hour block and trying to figure out what's actually interesting. Okay, that's Timothy and Steph Gordon. I just think, from what I've seen so far, again, I don't... Th there's an intellectual dishonesty, especially because we know how well-read and studied Timothy Gordon is. There's an intellectual dishonesty, seriously, in saying, this must be correlated to this. I have no evidence, I have no basis other than my personal feelings. But you can't tell me that's not true. There's intellectual dishonesty there. However, aside from that, these two come across as people who are quite genuine, but don't understand that it's okay to be in a different kind of relationship than the one that you specifically like. And and they genuinely view unequal relationships, they view the man being up here and the woman being down here as ideal and proper, and this kind of relationship as being abusive towards the man because he's not up here. I hope that made sense, using hand gestures to make my point. <laughs> very, very bizarre. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you consider giving this video a like, maybe subscribing if you enjoyed it. There's lots of Skeptical Saturday videos for you to check out. If you do like this channel, if you want to support what I do, you can become a channel member. You get some silly emotes and comment priority. I will always check the channel member comments. The best way to support this channel is via the Patreon. You get some exclusive videos, posts, merch updates, all of the, all of the stuff. If you're not sick to death of me, you can check out Emma Thorne backstage for more vloggy content and vibes and just chill stuff. If you like video games, you can follow me at Little Duck Gaming for gaming content, surprisingly. You can also find me live on Twitch at Emma Little Duck. I play lots of different kinds of games and you can come and say hi and bully me and uh, d laugh at how bad I am at everything. Before we go, I must give a big old shout out and a thank you to my colossal quackers and giant chickens over on Patreon. Thank you so very much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Put a duck in the comments section and I'll know that you are a top lad. Top lad being not a gendered term. We're all top lads. Have yourselves a very lovely week. I will see you really soon.